Dobre, ja som to Ništa, mogu to službeno najaviti flor, neki od vas i znaju, neki od vas i ne znaju. I ovo ide online, sada znaš. A ne! A, sorry. So, flor was our, has been our, our EVS volunteer for almost a year now. She has been working in Beyond since uh, March last year and she is a person who has really extensive experience in different fields of biology and spent quite a lot of time abroad doing research and internships uh, related to different types of fields. She's a person with very broad uh, interests and uh, today she's going to present to us what she has been doing in Beyond for the past year. So. Thank you, Eva. With such a good presentation of myself, I think I will disappoint you now. <laughs> but, uh, well, let's see. I will start actually to talk you a bit in general about conservation about uh, probably things that you already know, but uh, a bit related with different approaches of working in conservation, such as just monitoring or investigation to organizations that are actually work with rescue or rehabilitation of uh, endangered species, in the more extreme cases with uh, breathing or interdirection of species, and other cases of direct fight against poaching or illegal capture or killing, etc. Uh, probably you know many organizations or many people working on that, but uh, if you are not having a colorful idea about it, I will just give you some short examples about it. For instance, this is a center of uh, rehabilitation of marine animals in Portugal. There is another one in Spain, exactly the same, and pretty much they rehabilitate uh, marine species, even if sometimes others can uh, also come by. These photos are just some of the patients uh, that were been there, and sometimes they have species actually that are in an uh, endangered situation or in risk. Following just a short example about rescue of uh, exotic animals, this is actually a center in Spain, a prima domus, um, but there is another one in Netherlands, they are um, both the same organization. And just for curiosity, uh, sometimes there are species as well here that are actually in uh, high risk or really endangered. For instance, in the very first photo, the Burberry macaque, maybe most people don't know, but uh, has been a species that is actually more endangered than the Asiatic panda. Now, just as a title of curiosity, last year, the Natura 2000 awards were actually, uh, well, Two of the, fi the finalists were actually for uh, organizations that are working as breeding center. One was the, um, the project of Lesser Castrol, working mainly in Spain, but uh, this was a partnership with the Bulgarian project as well. And the other project was the Iberian Lins project between Portugal and Spain. And the idea was the winner <laughs> it was actually the Iberian Lins project working in Portugal and Spain. That's an extreme case of conservation already. Uh, the Iberian Lins is a species reduced to Portugal and Spain and uh, 
well, let's say that it really reached the the <coughs> the level of extinct in Portugal in the wild, and uh, just in Spain there well still some wild animals in the natural habitat. Uh, within the project, for ten last years or something, uh, an in reintroduction in the last two years, we now have a bit more than 400 animals again. And this was the winner of the uh, last uh, 2000 Natura project. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there are other biologists, ecologists, organizations working in uh, quite extreme scenarios as well either fighting against poaching, as for instance marine turtles, uh, most of the species as well uh, endangered, or for instance shark, shark conservation, whales, shark, dealing with uh, illegal fishing or overfishing. Uh, this is Nakawa project for instance, they work mainly in uh, Costa Rica, and it's here because it's, uh, well, a great project and working pretty well now. Now I will go through a bit of general information about EVS that uh, <laughs> actually maybe you already are familiar with, but uh, EVS stands for European Volunteer Service and it's actually part of Erasmus Plus, uh, so funded by European Union and it's pretty much opportunity for young people since, uh, I mean, between uh, 17 and 30 years old that, well, let's say that is a really broad experience because there are projects or organizations working in really different areas so since working with uh, children or young people or uh, refugees or some more specific projects in conservation or environment uh, pretty much it's opportunity for someone living abroad and uh, having a work and volunteering experience. It can be as short as two weeks to two months or uh, longer between uh, two and twelve months. And as I said, the European Union is, the, uh, as is financing the projects as covering it as 100% let's say so then that uh, travels uh, all basic life costs are are funded by European Union uh, there is an official website of course and any person that wants to know more about it or something you have a database of organizations that uh, are doing this kind of project and a database of uh, open projects as well and now that's the part that you are maybe most interesting. I will talk about um, my EVS experience in Zagreb with the organization Biome. <laughs> so uh, as Eva said, I've been here for almost one year and um, the activities were uh, with some variety in time or different from uh, from Mishmas, of course. Uh, one activity that uh, probably everybody that knows Biome uh, knows, it's the bird watching activities pretty often in time. Of course, I was in some of them, uh, either in the botanical garden or other places. Uh, you have here some of my photos. Some birds are uh, nicer to, to stand to the camera. <laughs> And um, okay. speaking about photos and uh, nature photos, you have something else here. Mm -hmm. okay. And okay, going on. Um, in the last years, Biom has, uh, has been doing um, some work, some activities in Uchka Natural Park. Uh, one, of, uh, one of those is uh, 
uh, one or two weeks of habitat restoration. Uh, and in the last two years, they receive a group of uh, Belgian volunteers, actually, uh, Belgian scouts as volunteers. And uh, so I was there as well during this one week and something. Uh, still in Uchka Natural Park, Biom has been, do has been doing also um, the ornithology camp uh, that is. Uh, that lasts for almost uh, two months, uh, August, September, a bit of October. Um, about this, well, probably you, you saw it, but uh, there is a short movie about uh, this ornithological camp that um, I had the chance to do this year uh, while I was there. That's uh, a quite great experience uh, to to get more familiar with some, um, some bird species, but uh, as well with other species, since, uh, well, the natural park is a pretty interesting place. Mm -hmm. Now, more indecision in winter, uh, there is this small project of bird feeders that, uh, well, there is a group of volunteers also uh, participating on it, uh, beyond I've been doing some workshops sometimes to to do the bird feeders, or um, there are as well those bird feeders in the botanical garden in, and in other places, and uh, uh -huh, wait uh -huh. <laughs> before showing you more about bird feeders. Um, just to mention that uh, one of my other small projects during all year, more or less, um, was putting camera traps, uh, camera trapping in some different locations, either just uh, to learn how to use them, but uh, also to, to see what species we could trap in some places. And uh, for last, now, <coughs> we we put some camera traps that you can see in the photos uh, in the bird feeder in the botanical garden and um, to end up we, we will see some of the videos let me see yes this one so even if those bird feeders are actually designed for small birds we have always some other birds that try to well, to get some food, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> okay. Can we put the player with the other ones? Okay. We'll see some more videos. Uh, all of them. <laughs> this is very interesting because even if the quality of the, the cameras is not very good, we can actually identify the species and see how many different species go there and the behavior as well. Some species much more confident staying in the bird feeder a long time. Others just go and fly away and go again. Some of them just appear during uh, some minutes. Other like the sparrows and the uh, mire, they are there like all day and going all the time. Okay. Those are some of my favorites, that's what they are here. But we, I actually had more than 500 videos uh, just in two days. Uh, so they are really using the bird feeder. Uh, we got to thank the volunteers that uh, went there to put, to put food actually and as well the people from the botanical garden that uh, I saw that they, they are also going there. <laughs> Those are the confident ones all the time there. We can see sometimes behavior that the bigger ones uh, kind of are the owners when they are there. <laughs> and this is all the same day. What? 
That was in two days because the memory card just uh, ran out of uh, memory. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <coughs> You can identify the species now. As I said, some big ones insist to to try to have some food as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> This is one of my favorites as well. <laughs> it was the only time, actually, these birds. What kind of food are you uh, Sunflower seeds, other small seeds, a mix, mix up of birds' uh, seeds, yes. <coughs> mm. It was also very interesting that before uh, someone was there to put more food, there were almost no birds. Right after uh, the volunteers put food, just 20 or 30 birds went there all the time. <laughs> okay. Hmm, six, seven at least, I'm, or more actually, maybe more, maybe around ten, counting with these very common ones, <laughs> yes. Just play this one by last. I think it's the last one. Maybe you already saw the same species, but I, I really love woodpeckers, so. <laughs> and this is actually one of my favorite ones. <laughs> okay. And that's it. If you have any question or any comment, you have now the opportunity. As I said, <laughs> that will, will be short as we are. <laughs> so, Paula is watching. So. <laughs> she can comment now. I have, uh, yes, I mentioned the video. We have actually, I have the link. Mm -hmm. You can just yeah, click on it. Okay, <laughs> you can just click on the link if you want. This is, I have to prepare uh, for the stream. Okay. <laughs> uh, do you think you learned some skills the past year that you might be to use? <laughs> In conservation, you mean? <laughs> Well, uh, of course, about birds identification, it's always interesting and I actually learned something, at least to, to get together the knowledge 
between Portuguese, English and Croatian, <laughs> the names. That is as challenging sometimes, or even the different in habitats between Croatia, Portugal, Spain, or the places. Uh, as well, the photo traps, for instance, is something that I really like, and it's a very interesting technique nowadays. As well, trying to do some movies was also a beginning of something. I'm sure that next time that will be ten times better or more. <laughs> that is music. That deserves the music. <laughs> or not. Yeah, yeah, Don't worry. Well, so this is the movie of uh, Uchka during the ornithological camp. You can see the camping, the birds, a bit of all the day. <laughs> yes. you can see also the photo drop then <laughs> again yes <coughs> and there is a video as well yes mainly it's the best spot actually Just birds? Mm, Eva, you are the most indicated person to tell us. <laughs> oh, but for instance, this year.
That's a photo trap, yes. Well, in the end, in the last days, they were just there with us, so...
Okay, so this video was pretty much done to show any person that would go either as a volunteer to Uchka in the ornithological camp to just any person to know what they are doing there actually. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to see the camera traps also? Yes. Uh, oh. Yes, they yes. want. Yes. <laughs> I have I the link. Shut, uh, I have to shut down two cameras. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have the link on the presentation, but uh, it's is that one, is that one? No, no, it's not that one. It's a shorter one. I'm not sure if it was on YouTube or just in the Facebook of Beyond. You can just get with the link, maybe. Is uh, not that one? Is the photo? Is the photo drops one in the last one? That my one up is that link yes if it's in the presentation mode you have the link well just as you wish yeah, well, but uh -huh, is that one yeah easy. they uh, Beyond put it just there, uh, so you cannot record it. Yeah. So. <coughs> mm -hmm, no, they well, integrate it. Well, I can go online and try to put uh, it there. Mm. <coughs> mm. Okay. So this is in Uchka, um, just with a camera trap. And it's, uh, well, uh, a small selection of uh, all animals that uh, were trapped in the camera. That's near a pound. This is not the best image, but there is a roe deer and a baby roe deer. <laughs> if you can see them, okay, yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> And this is a famous group of wild cows, supposedly. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> they saw the camera, yes. It's a large group actually, they are 10, 12 maybe, 
Some of them really like the camera, actually. Okay, we have a small fox. Mm -hmm. How close do they need to get to the camera to figure it? Uh, it's not exactly how close, but uh, if they are in the, in the view of the camera mm -hmm. and depending, for instance, you can see in the corner a spider mm -hmm. that is on the camera, literally. And uh, normally animals are from three, four. I think he was scared of the spider, not of the camera. <laughs> this animal is part of the, the group of cows, actually. OK, and by last, uh, a badger. <laughs> OK. Okay. And it was this. <laughs> okay, and we have one question uh, from Yusuf Tutel. Hi, Yusuf. Uh, he asked uh, which was the most interesting uh, project or thing that you worked on. <laughs> hmm. The most interesting. Mm, well, I cannot really choose one in particular. Uh, there was some general experience and knowledge interesting. The photo traps was uh, something actually pretty interesting and that I may use in future, but well, cannot really choose just one. And that's it.